Do you remember the last time you got a traffic ticket? Let me tell you about mine. It was a few years ago, summertime. My family and I were driving back from the beach. We got lost looking for the highway entrance ramp. We turned a corner, boom, sirens and flashing lights. The officer said we made an illegal turn and the ticket was around $150. We thought about challenging it, but we decided we'd probably lose. After all, we did make the turn. So it was expensive and it was annoying, but we paid the ticket and we moved on with our lives. Now, I wanna tell you about my client, Ashley. Ashley's a single mom. Back in April 2015, she was having a really tough time. She was working as a server at the Waffle House, making 2.13 an hour, and it wasn't enough to support her family. One night, when Ashley was driving home from work, she caught a speeding ticket, and she didn't have the money to pay. She asked the court for a payment plan. The court said no, no payment plans for traffic tickets. So what could she do? She didn't have a choice. She couldn't pay, and she didn't pay. Well, unfortunately, about a year later, Ashley got another ticket. And that's when she learned her license was suspended because she didn't pay the first one. Along with the ticket, the officer charged her with driving on a suspended license, which is a criminal misdemeanor and carries with it more fines and fees and the possibility of jail time. Well, now that Ashley knew she didn't have a license, she didn't dare drive. A second driving on suspended charge could easily put her in jail, and then she would lose custody of her children. But without driving, she didn't have a way to get to work. And she tried catching rides from friends and family, but that was hard. And sometimes she would wait for hours after her shift was over until somebody could come and pick her up. And sometimes nobody came and she would have to take a taxi home. And that cost more than she earned in an entire day. She couldn't get to work reliably and finally, her boss told her not to come in anymore. Her boss said she'd be welcome to have her job back once she resolved her transportation situation. Without a job, Ashley moved back in with her parents and she worked part-time for their cleaning business because they could drive her back and forth to work. Her children lived with their other grandparents about 30 minutes away, and Ashley would go for weeks and sometimes more than a month without seeing them because she didn't have a ride. Her parents paid her about $150 a week, but her expenses were more like $200 a week. So to make up the difference she would work odd jobs when she could, but mostly she didn't eat. When I first met Ashley, this situation had already been going on for a year. She just couldn't find a way out. Now, there's a name for Ashley's situation. It's called the cycle of poverty. You can't pay your tickets, so you lose your license. Without your license, you can't hold down a job. And without a job, you can't earn the money that you need to pay the tickets. But it doesn't have to be this way. Some states, Mississippi, California, have recently decided to stop these harmful suspensions. But 42 states, including Florida, still punish drivers for their poverty by taking their driver's licenses. Right now, there are more than a million people in the state of Florida who cannot drive at all, not because they're bad drivers, but because they're too poor to pay traffic tickets. And it gets worse. According to the American Association of Motor Vehicle Administrators, three quarters of drivers with suspended licenses just keep driving. Well, can you blame them? Think about your own life. How would you get to work or buy groceries or take your kid to the doctor if you couldn't drive? Uber isn't an option for low-income people. 
And in most parts of the country, public transportation isn't a viable option either. There's a reason that according to the US Census Bureau, 85% of Americans drive to work. The problem is that if you're driving on a suspended license and you get stopped again, you'll be criminally charged and your debts will compound. That financial hole you need to climb out of will be deeper than ever. And you may even go to jail because you can't pay. Now the cycle of poverty looks like this. Last year, in Jacksonville, the state attorney prosecuted nearly 12,000 people, just like Ashley, for driving on a suspended license. What a waste of law enforcement resources. And that's just one medium-sized city. Can you imagine how many millions of people all across the country are stuck in this nonsensical debt trap. And then, you have to consider racial bias. Police ticket black people more than any other group, and it is not because they're worse drivers. In Florida, the ACLU found that police gave seatbelt tickets to black drivers twice as often as white drivers, even though blacks and whites use seatbelts at about the same rates. When police target low-income communities of color for traffic enforcement, which they often do, license suspensions inevitably follow. So it's not just a vicious cycle. It's a discriminatory cycle, and it has to stop. The good news is that momentum is growing across the country to end these harmful suspensions. In Jacksonville, the state attorney launched a promising diversion program and there's a bill pending in the Florida legislature that would help a lot of people if it passes by mandating access to affordable payment plans and payment alternatives like community service. And we know from a successful program in Palm Beach County that affordable payment plans work to help people pay down debt and avoid suspension. There, the county reduced suspensions by 79% just by letting people pay as little as $5 a month if that's what they can afford. But these measures, though welcome, don't go nearly far enough. We must reconsider the fines themselves. Why not set them based on ability to pay? A traffic ticket is supposed to be an expensive annoyance. You pay it, you move on, hopefully, you drive more carefully in the future. But we don't all have the same financial means. And my annoyance, it could be your financial calamity. A traffic citation shouldn't be a one-way ticket to an endless spiral of debt, jail, and poverty. I wanna tell you a little more about Ashley because her story has a happy ending. I work at an organization called the National Center for Law and Economic Justice. We're a national nonprofit based in New York City working at the intersection of civil rights and poverty. And about a year ago, we, along with our partners at Civil Rights Corps, Just City, and Baker Donaldson, sued the state of Tennessee on behalf of Ashley and many others who were deprived of their licenses without consideration of their ability to pay. And thanks to that lawsuit, Ashley got her license back. Not only that, but just three days ago, the court entered an order granting that same opportunity to 291,000 low-income Tennesseans. Mm -hmm. Today, Ashley is working again, and her family has been reunited. She even started nursing school, a step that would have been impossible without a driver's license. When Ashley graduates, she is going to get a good job, one that pays enough to support her family and even repay traffic debt. That's the power of a driver's license. All around the country, there are millions of people who cannot live their lives 
go to work, provide for themselves and their loved ones because they have traffic debt they can't afford to pay. But communities are coming together to repeal these harmful suspension laws. And I urge you to support these efforts. Let's break this vicious cycle. Thank you.